right, next step. Next step we gotta do is we're gonna replace this oil pump. I got a brand new one, Toyota OEM oil, oil pump. I'm also gonna replace this lower oil pan that I've been wanting to do since it looks like it has, looks like it's kind of concave at the bottom of it. So we're gonna take off the bottom pan, the mid pan, then we'll take off the oil pump. We got both of our oil pans off, the lower, upper, mid, I don't know what you call the higher one, but either way, got that off. Look inside, looks normal, stock block, it looks like it's been in before. You can see how this rod has some writing on it, it makes me think it was rebuilt or replaced at some some point. So I don't know, depends on how you look at it, like, oh, it's kind of good, it's been through and they kind of replaced something, or bad, like, oh, something happened to it. Either way, it's been through, which I think is kind of a a good thing as long as someone did the work the right way so got that looks pretty good looks like i'm not gonna have too too much of a hard time cleaning up this surface but now let's move on to taking off the front cover and taking off the uh, oil pump all right i was about to pull off the uh, timing belt crank pulley and of course i can mine is kind of stuck on there pretty good so i had to go back and get the same pulley that i used for the original crank pulley that dampener one this for the actual one inside so we'll use this knock that out once i got that timing belt pulley off i was able to take off all the bolts for the oil pump pop it off no issues all i did was i used a uh one of the pry bars came up right behind it right back here and gave a little push that way on both sides and you're able to slide it right off you have to take the ac compressor because that's bolted to the oil pump once you get that that off it comes out and you also need to take off the uh crank trigger center that's it, that's how you get the oil pump off. Next step we gotta do is now we're gonna start reassembling. So I have a brand new oil pump here, got that. One thing you gotta remember when you order these oil pumps is they don't, they don't come with a uh, front main seal already installed. So you have to order the main seal separate and install it yourself. And when you're installing it, let me show you a tip that I feel like has come around over the last, oh geez, come out. One sec. Okay, you got it out. So. When you go to install the front main seal, you want to make it even with the lip. You don't want to push it down as far as you can. You want to even. That's a little tip I'll give. And you only want to, if you're going to lubricate it at all, you're going to lubricate the inner hole, not the outside where it seals up against the oil pump housing. You're going to seal where it goes around the uh, crankshaft. That's all. Got the block all prepped, cleaned up the uh, mounting surface. Next thing we got to do is put the Toyota FIPG on it. I got the black stuff. Right here, gonna lay a bead all around. It's really easy, you just follow these little uh, grooves all the way around, do that. There's a couple double spots right here where the O-rings go. And that's it, then we'll slide it on. Got the oil pump on, got the crank pickup on, and the sensor for it. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean the block surface where the upper oil pan is gonna go. I'm gonna clean the upper oil pan wherever I have it in this messy ass garage. Clean the surface over that, then get that done. Bleh. That get that bolted back down onto here. I'd hate to admit how long it took me to clean the bottom of this upper oil upper oil pan, but either way, I went to go put it on, and I didn't have the right uh, O-ring for the oil pickup. So I tried to put one in there, but when you look through there, hold up, let me get the right angle. Uh, it's hard to see it right now, but either way, there's a gap right here, right where that O-ring is, it's gapped. So if I if I take a flashlight, got one right here. I'll show you guys what I'm working with here. All right, let's see if I can get you guys to see this. See so you can see the flash? So you can see the uh, light. And there's a big gap there. So there's an O-ring right under here, right under the, uh, this is where the pickup tube goes. O-ring between there and the block. And the one that I put in there is too fat. So tomorrow, tomorrow I'm gonna have to go find one. I don't wanna have to order one from Toyota. So either way, I need to keep finding stuff to do. Another thing I did was, when you go single turbo, there's a nipple on the water pump that comes out of here that feeds the twins. I took it out, tapped it with a 1 8 inch MPT, and then put a plug in it. 
So I got rid of that, cleaned that up a little bit. I had a uh, one of those vacuum fittings on it. That's what everyone does, and they always go bad. So uh, I need to keep finding stuff to keep doing. Well, something else I can keep doing, keep buttoning up the front. I got a uh, billet timing belt tensioner. Let me throw that on. So something else I noticed after the fact was, oh, blocking the light. So the oil pump I took off wasn't a OEM Toyota one. I don't know if that had anything to do with me not getting that oil pressure I was looking for, but either way, I think kind of goes to show, stick with OEM, at least that's what I'm doing. See, another little thing I did was on the, what is this, turbo side, uh, intake manifold side, there's the oil level sensor. So what it is, it's, it's a float that sits inside of here on the bottom of the oil pan. You can tell. I modified mine. When I say modified, I just cut it off. That's the way, it's, the way this usually is, is this is bolted down in there. You see this little black piece floats up and down, and this is already broken. This is a common thing. They break, then you have this black plastic floating around in your oil, and break down, then you get little pieces getting sucked into your oil pump, whatever the case may be. So all I did was unbolt it, cut it, bolted the the uh, base back in place, cover up the hole. Little things. Let me tell you what, laying down this uh, bead of FIPG around the upper oil pan sucks. My arm hurts. Now I gotta throw this on real quick and bolt it down. Finished up bolting down the upper and lower oil pan. Let me tell you what, it's no fun laying that FIPG around the uh, upper oil pan. Your wrist starts to cramp up from trying to squeeze that stuff out and keep a nice bead all the way around it. So. Got that done, everything bolted down, torqued down the spec. Next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna attack putting on the ATI front damper. One advantage I have of my ATI super damper is that I bought it used, so it's already been on a crank, so hopefully it should fit without issue. I hear some people have to bore them out, this is this and that. We know this one has been on a motor, so hopefully it doesn't give us much issue. issue. Let's see if we can get it on without any specialty tools first. One thing I didn't realize when I was about to do this is that you have to put the timing belt on because you have to put the lower timing cover on with the timing belt behind it before you can put the damper on. A little foresight I wasn't thinking about. So I'm going to throw the stock OEM Toyota brand new timing belt I got, throw that on, bolt the front lower uh, timing cover on, and then we'll go ahead and start installing the ATI damper. So I got my assistant. Ninja Turtle Toes. So we're trying to put this ATI dampener on. And I ended up heating it up a little bit and was able to go on with some anti seize It's pretty close to being torqued down. We're switching positions. She's gonna get the final torque on it. I'm gonna hold the flywheel with this pry bar against the uh, starter teeth. And that'll give us the leverage we need. So I'm gonna knock that out. I don't have it torqued all the way. So like I said, I started it. I put some anti-seas inside of the, uh, you know, around the shaft. And I started getting it on by hand, just went a little bit. The little taps with the hammer, with the mallet. And I started with the bolt as far as I could crank it down. Then had my girlfriend come out. She held the flywheel. And I just kept torquing down the bolts and we got it to go down all the way. Right now it's at 200 foot pounds. I know it needs to be 249, which I can't do it here with the tools I have. So I'll have to do it in the car when I have the transmission hooked up. I'll put in fifth gear, hold the brakes, and I'll be able to torque it down. So that's that. And I'm just waiting on my head and transmission. That's all I got going on. So we got dog box coming from Finland. Uh, PGS dog box gear set got coming in. Uh, should be shipping out soon. So I should have it in a couple weeks. And the head, I don't know why it's taking so long, but he needs to get back to me. Let me know what size shimless buckets I need to order. So we can get that done. And then... That'd be it. We can throw this back in the in the car, and I can't wait. So, pour and polished head, GSC S2 cams, uh, valve springs, dog box, and we're just gonna send it for 900. That's the goal.
back. I know it's been a while. We've been waiting on parts, but good things come to those that wait, I guess, right? It's the saying or something. So either way, we've been waiting on a uh, dog box transmission from BGS. Finally got it, waited something like three months. They had to send out the heat treatment, COVID, shipping, whatever the case may be, it took a really long time. But I wanted to unbox the video, show you guys how it comes packaged, what comes in it, you know, if you're buying a dog box. I feel like the dog box, something not many people are buying. It's not, it's not too much of a common street car item, street car item. But if you're running an R154, it's kind of your only option if you want to keep the training and make some power with it, which is what we're trying to do. So we'll do a quick unboxing, and then tomorrow we're gonna drop it off at the transmission shop, have them start putting it in, and uh, they'll see what other parts I need to replace while we're in there. I know we're gonna have to do some bearings because it doesn't come with all the bearings that you need, which you would think it does if you're spending this much money on transmission parts. But either way, let's open this up. Let's see what we got. Pause it. Don't stop it. Pause it. So open up the box and you have a quick look inside. It looks like a whole bunch of square groupers or a scene out of like Scarface. A whole bunch of stuff wrapped up in little baggies and squares and you're not quite sure what's in it. Um, oh man, some of this stuff has some weight to it. But hey, let's just open up every single one and make sure we got everything. So we came up with an idea. We know why it took so long to ship three months. Because you had to package it and you can't even open it. <laughs> There's nothing even in this one. Look how many package, look how many individually wrapped I things there are. This little thing didn't need all of that. Did it? Yeah, you don't, you don't want it to break. So yeah, everything's really nicely packaged. That's one thing we can say. Then after you've spent 10, 15 minutes trying to unwrap everything, this is what you end up with. A slew of brand new dog box gears, helical cut. So starting from the beginning, it's a R154 helical cut dog box gear set. You can see what makes it a dog box gear set are these engagement teeth right here, which are called dog boxes. If you look at the gears from what angle is the best one? Um, kind of from the side. Let's see. So if you're looking from here, you see how these teeth don't go straight down. They're at an angle. That, that's what makes them helical cut. If you had straight cut, they would go straight up and down. They're a little bit noisier. So since I'm using it on the street, we went with a helical cut. Shouldn't make any difference for the power I'm making, anything like that. So could I take, do I know the exact name of everything that's on this table? No, I'm not a transmission guy. Don't know anything like that, but I know this isn't the stock stuff. You can see the hel helical stuff on, on this gear set right here. Sideways, sideways, sideways. Input shaft right here. And looks like we're going first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Is what I'd imagine. I don't know. Don't don't hold me on that. I'm not a transmission guy. Uh, let's see if I can show you a little bit up close of the dog box or the dog engagement. Let's see. Let me let's see if we can get this just right. You can see how those mesh up. That's where your dog engagement comes from. So, awesome. Looking forward to that. So, looks like we have everything. Next step we got, drop it off at the uh, transmission shop tomorrow. That's the plan. So, made out of the house, bearing the weather. Got my chauffeur here. On our way ATF, got the transmission in the back. The new PGS gear sets. Uh, I forgot a shifter. I'm not sure if it'll need it to be able to go through the gears, see if they're engage and disengage it correctly, but either way, I'm sure he's been through it before, before be able to take care of it. So right now, bearing the weather, should be the shortly. On the next one. Where are we? All right, pulling up to ATF right here. Auto, automatic transmission factor in Davy. See what they say, how long, how long it'll take. Drop of transmission over at over at uh, ATF 
And he said, no problem. It'll take him maybe a week or so. He's going to try to get into it in the next couple of days, see what failed in it, let me know. We're going to order new bearings for it. Maybe not OEM. We're going to buy maybe uh, NTN bearings. They make some of the OEM bearings. Save us some money. I think OEM bearings alone were like $200 just for Toyota bearings. So maybe save a little bit of money there. I'm hoping some of the original R1, R154 R one be salvageable. Maybe I can sell those gears to someone that needs them. Um, besides that, just waiting on the head. Should be back kind of soon. My machine just got sick for a couple weeks. Wasn't working. He's back at it. So I'm really looking forward to getting the dog box and his built head and throw it back in the car and get, get riding again. It's been way too long. So stay tuned for it. Filming. What is it, John? YouTube, comment, like this video if you like it. Watch some more if you don't like it. <laughs> 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 <laughs>